All right, well, you have taken statistics, most of you, but um, I would like to know, when somebody says statistics, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? Numbers. Numbers. Okay, let's, let's actually write these, these words over here. Numbers, what else? Wow, you're quite advanced. What else? Mean, mean, variation, coefficient, standard deviation. Now, there, there's a very, very good um, sort of a so-called granny test, grandma test. What grandma test is, it is if you know something, if you're an expert in something, you should be able to explain that in one or two sentences to your grandma who doesn't know anything about that field. So if you know, and most of you are quite advanced if you know this, this type of stuff. So if in one sentence somebody would ask you, what is statistics? What would that sentence be? Analysis. Analysis. Well, that's, that's just one word. Getting close. Well, the thing is, you're all right. There's, there's no, yes. Maybe statistics is a process of uh, turning figures into numbers. Very good. That's, that's basically what it is. That's basically what statistic is. Um, but if you look at it a little bit differently, to me, statistics is a language. Well, most of you would say, what are you talking about? It's numbers about data, but it is a language. And if you know that language, you would be able to know what the real world tells you. So statistics is all about the grammar, is all about the sentences, is all about the, the words and all these things. And if you know the, the, la the grammar of that language, i.e. the methods of that language, if you know the words of that language, then you will be able to, to talk to the world that basically surrounds us. And um, so statistics, I claim that the statistics is a language. And if you know it, you would be, it will be easier for you to communicate with the real world. Okay? And it's not only about the numbers, it's not only about the data, it's not only about the analysis. All of this is true. But, and the, when we, today basically we will talk about two major things, like two, most of you have already known statistics, so what we'll do today, I'll briefly talk about what are the parts of statistics and why it's needed, and then we'll talk about uh, some specific examples maybe, and um, before even talking about specific examples, all of you mentioned like numbers, data, range, simple mean, covariance, and analysis, which is, which is true. Statistics is, is separated into two different, like two major branches. One of them is called descriptive analysis or descriptive statistics. And basically, well, most of these things that you have already mentioned has to do with the descriptive statistics. Numbers, range, mode, and these type of things is basically descriptive statistics. <coughs> it tells you, it describes you the group. Well, I haven't met you before, most of you, and I do not know that group, but 
before coming to this lecture, I was very much curious, what, who are the audience? Who would be my audience? And one way of determining that, I, what I can do, I can ask you your age, or one characteristics that I might be interested, if I'm, let's say, working for um, a mobile operators like Baxel and Nazarcel, that would be, well, how much on average do they talk on the mobile phone? Okay? And one way of do, knowing that is, is simply asking from you, collecting the data from you, okay, by simply asking you, which is called, this type of data is called what type of data, since most primary. of you, what? Primary data. Primary data. It's, it's called primary data because I'm, I'm getting the data directly from you, okay? So in a sense, that's a primary data, but, well, thank you very much. Well, now, this is, this is basically our primary data, okay? That's basically our primary data, but if you give that to someone, if you're working for, for, for a company and somebody asks you, give me some sense, give me some ideas what these, like, this class, like, how much this class talks on the mobile phones, okay? So what you, what you can do, you can analyze that. You can, you can analyze that and you can easily calculate like range, mean, mode, covariance, and all these measures of central statistics, all measures of statistics. And actually, let's, let's do that quickly. Um, but before doing that, I will... I'll show you maybe one trick how to do, how to analyze, how to come up with the descriptive data using Excel. To do that, all you need to do is to go to Excel add-ins, and then you will get this, this type of a dialog box. And in here, all you need to do is just to check the first two things, analysis tool pack and analysis tool pack VBA. And if you click on that, and then click yes. It will take a few seconds before it installs that, but usually uh, the Microsoft has that. So it will take like a few seconds or few, it might take a few minutes before it's installed, but once it's installed, you will have a data analysis option which will allow you to do tons of really, really sophisticated tests uh, using Excel. So you don't need for that like statistical software like SPSS and Stata. And again, the options are analysis, tool pack, and analysis tool pack VBA. So all you need is to check these two things. And once you do that, there will be in the data tab, you will have data analysis, which will be a new thing, data analysis. And you can click on that. Like, to do the descriptive analysis, let's say to calculate mean, medium, range, and mode, and this type of things, what you can do, you can easily use Excel, and Excel in a matter of seconds will calculate all these these things to you like these numbers are simply numbers and it doesn't it may not make sense to you but if you know how to interpret these numbers and how to analyze these numbers it will tell you a lot of a lot of information about that and let and let me show you how to do that all all you can do, you can click on descriptive analysis. Well, if you click on the data analysis, you will get this type of thing, like a dialog box, like that. And in here, there's a descriptive statistics. If you click OK on that, and then there's input range, you select the data, and that's for numerical data. And then here, there's a summary of statistics, and we click OK. In a matter of seconds, it will calculate for us the average. 
it will calculate for us median, it will calculate the mode, standard deviation, sample variance, kurtosis, skewness, and whatnot. Okay? Now it tells you a lot of things. If you know that language, you would be able to interpret that data a lot, and you will, you will get a, make a sense out of that data. For example, on average you would know that, okay, well, average students in this class talks about 50 seconds, okay, per call. But you would also know that this average might be misleading. Why? Because of the outliers, that's right. Because there are like some people who talk like really, really long on the phone, okay? And that basically skews your data. It, it, it increases your mean. But then what would be another estimate for you to sort of get a sense on average how much students talk? Median. What is median? Okay. That's right. In a sense, what median is, it will tell you that about 50% of the students will talk more than 25 seconds, and about another 25, uh, another 50% will talk less than 25 seconds. Okay. So it will tell you a more, ac it will give you a more accurate picture. On top of that, this is like the measures of central tendency, like median, mode, and this type of things. But what you can also look at the, you can also look at the range and minimum and maximum value. You can see that, okay, well, students can talk as, as less as five seconds, but they can talk as more as, well, how many minutes? Like three minutes. Well, four minutes. No? So that gives you how the data is dispersed. And if you know these things, if you, if you're able, if you know what, the, what these things mean, like what range means, what uh, standard deviation means, what mode means, you will be able to make sense and you will be able to get a better idea about the talking habits of this class. Okay? And that's basically a descriptive statistics in a nutshell. Now let me ask you a question and um, I usually ask this question when I do a, in, in my classes and that question do you think that males talk more than females or vice versa? Who, talk, who talks more? Female talks more, okay. Well what it is, what we have well, the, the good thing, how, how do you know that females talk more? Those who claim that females talk more, how do you know that? Because you, you, because you were told, you, well, somebody told you so, no? It's in our culture we accept it, okay. Well, how do you know that? So, one way of finding it out is simply collecting data and analyzing it. And that's what statistics is all about. So by simply having a claim, and then what you do, you, you select that data, and based on that data, you make a conclusion. Okay? But since I mentioned selecting data, then that's, that's sort of, you can say, okay, if you're selecting a data, and based on that small data, if you make conjecture for the whole population, that's not really true. Well, well, the thing is, you can always select a sample. And one good example for that, for how many of you, well, most of you already probably have passports, no? And when you go, oh, and when you go that passport, they, they drew blood from you, no? A blood sample, no? They didn't suck out the whole blood out of you, did they? Just to, to know, okay, what type of blood do you have, no? They simply selected a sample and that's usually enough, no? So in a sense what we can do, we can do the same thing. And to do that, what I can do, here I have, let's, let's imagine that this, this is the whole population, okay? This is the whole population, the class is our population, and what I can do, I can randomly select a sample. Instead of asking every single one of you, 
how much you have talked on the phone, what I can do, I can select a sample, a reasonably large sample, and then based on that sample, I can give an estimate for the whole population. Okay? And let me actually, of course I will make some mistakes, there will be some errors, give or take, but on average, I would be accurate. And let's actually do that. Let's actually do that. So I'll, I'll need, since you volunteered already to assist me, will you please like randomly select one? Okay, then you. No, okay. no yeah, you, you can look at it, please. You, ma'am? Mm -hmm. I'll shuffle it a little bit. So what we're doing, in a sense, we're, we're randomly selecting a sample. Okay? How many have we selected? Okay, will you please give these things to me now? All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks. So that's the sample. Okay, that's the sample, and I'll select another one here. And let's actually imagine that we do not know the population. We do not know, in general, what, what is the class, like how many seconds class talks on the, per one call. So these are the numbers. Okay, so this is a sample, and what we can do, we can do the same thing. We can do the data analysis and see, calculate at least the average. Now look, this is the sample, I'll put here sample, and I will copy and paste the population next to it so that we can compare the results. Now look. Look at the mean. For the sample it's 54. For the mean population it's 48. So we are by 6 seconds off. It's not a big big difference, is it? And the thing is, if you select a larger sample, the smaller that error would be. The difference between the population parameter and sample parameter will give you a, a so-called sampling error. Okay? And the, the thing is, there, there's a property, well, you might already know, Shahriar, at least you should know it. There's a property that if you select a sample, on average, your sampling error will be equal to, to what? If you select like all possible samples, okay, on average, your sampling error will be equal to zero. zero. It will be equal to zero. On average, you will be accurate. On average, you will get exact the same value. In that our particular case, this is specifically true when you have a relatively homogeneous group. Homogeneous group means that the, the people are the same. The samples are relatively the same. And your blood, basically, getting back to your blood sample example, your blood is a homogeneous thing. It's not like blood on your left arm is better than the blood on your right arm, okay? Or like here you have like type 1, blood and here you have like minus two. Okay? It's not that. It's a homogeneous group. So a small sample usually enough for you to make a conclusion for the whole population. In that particular case, we do not have that homogeneous group because some people talk more, some people talk less. But nevertheless, you see that the difference is only six seconds. It's not that big. On top of that, if you look at the median, Median is almost the same. It's 25. It, it's 25 seconds. Okay? So the, this is basically allows us this concept, the concept that on average 
and it's called unbiasedness property. It allows us to select a sample and based on a sample draw a conclusion for the whole population. And that's, that's called inferential statistics. That's called inferential statistics. It's from word inferences. We draw conclusions. We, we take a, well, we have a population, let's say a big population. We take a small sample, and based on that sample, we draw a conclusion for the whole population. Okay? And on average, we'll be quite accurate. Like, you see the difference? It's not a big difference between these two values. So on average, you will be accurate. Okay? And the bigger your sample, the more accurate your results would be. Like now, if I select another five students, and if I add that to my sample, you'll see that the difference between the sample mean and the population mean would be even less. Okay? You can, you can try for yourself. Okay? I'll leave it there and to test that. But let me give you an example for the now what we can do for the inferential statistics. I will not go into details and how these things are done, but most of you probably have taken like hypothesis test, know what hypothesis testing is. But let's get back to our question, who talks more, males or females? How can we find it out? Well, assuming that this is our sample, and this is a representative sample for the whole Azerbaijani population, or at least Azerbaijani students of your age, then what we can do, we can, we can basically test that hypothesis. Or what, what hypothesis is, it's a claim that we make without having a proof behind it. Okay? The claim that you make is that females talk more. Okay? But let's actually see if that's the case. So our hypothesis is going to be how, how, can, how can we know if, if females talk more than males? Then you would expect that the number of seconds, average number of seconds per female is, is going to be, well, well, let's say this is the average for females. This is mu and this is the average for males. Okay? Then which way the sign would be? So you will say that the average for females, population average for females would be bigger than population average for males. Yes? You would expect that. But the thing is, the problem is we do not have population numbers, but we have a sample. We have you guys. We have already selected a data for you. And that's the sample. So what we can do, if this is the case for the whole population, then if we select a sample and we look at the sample means, then we would expect that the sample mean for the females should be bigger than the sample mean for the females. Males, big, well, the other way around. Sample mean for the females should be bigger than the sample mean for males. Okay? But the thing is, remember, we are making some sampling errors. Okay? There might be that females, let's say, the sample mean for females is, let's say, 56 seconds, but for males it's 54 seconds. There's only a small, very small number of seconds, okay, like two seconds. How do we know if that's because of the chance or that's really the case? To do that, we're using inferential statistics and it gives you a probability of attaining that difference. Or the probability of having bigger difference. Okay? And that's called p-value. But that's a little bit of a, a little bit an advanced thing, but let's uh, it p-value also tells you how, in a sense, it tells you how um, how significant, it, it defines how significant the difference is. Okay? If it's really significant difference or it's just a chance. 
it's because of the chance. Okay, p-value allows us to tell that. Now let's let's since we want to do that, what we can do at the very least, what we can do, we can calculate the average sample average for females and sample average for males. There's actually a, a test for that, which is called Z-test for the differences, well, T-test for the differences between the, um, between the means. And that's, you can, you can do that, I will show you how to do that in data analysis, like using Excel, but it's, the, the mechanic of it, mechanics of it is that it, it will tell you if it's if there's a statistically significant difference between these two things or not okay and to do that we're using we will use so-called p-value most of you may not know what p-value is but usually when you do the test you accept that if the p-value is less than 0.05 percent then you would say that the probability of accepting 0.05%, the difference that you will get of, uh, is, is basically your p-value. Getting that difference or more extreme than that difference. Okay, And the, the smaller the p-value, then you will reject your null hypothesis. You will reject your null hypothesis, which, well, which, is bas your, uh, which will be a little bit of a complicated thing, but I will not go into that. But, Let's let's actually let's actually calculate the difference. Uh, but we have different number of females and males actually. It doesn't matter. It matters because you can have the, the test the test will take that into account. When you do the test, the test takes that into account. Okay, before doing that, all I need to do, I need to sort the data by males and females. Here are the numbers. Like this is the average for average for females. It's 56 seconds. For males, it's 43 seconds. Okay? But the thing is, it's still you still do not have enough evidence to say that because like the difference is is very small and it's not statistically significant and you can say well how do you know that the thing is there's so-called p-value and that's the probability and the probability that that we will get a bigger difference than that but like the difference here is is this is let's let's calculate the difference the difference is 13 seconds okay 13 and a half seconds well but the thing is the probability that you will get 13 seconds and more the difference like that is is quite big it's 21 percent and that's called p-value it's it's that thing over here 0 0.21 okay and if you do the hypothesis testing, you will see that it's not statistically significant. The difference is not statistically significant. And that's, that's, I have done the similar test in almost, uh, in five or six classes that I have taught lately. And in every single class, and in almost in every single class, I had the same result, meaning that I did not find enough evidence to say that males talk less than females. Okay? It's it's just not statistically significant. The difference there are differences. Sometimes male talk even more than females, but that difference is not statistically significant. Okay? So at least on the mobile phone, females, we do not have enough evidence to say that at me, uh, on mobile phones, females talk more than females, okay? So this is, this is an example for the inferential statistics. This is just one example 
uh, for inferential statistics. Based on a sample, we select a sample, and based on a sample, we make a conclusion. We draw, we analyze the data, and we draw a conclusion for the whole population. Okay, that's called inferential statistics. Now, there's there's something a different thing, but sometimes like you can you can, and all these things are basically based on on probabilities. How many of you have taken a probability class, or like a separate probability, or are comfortable with probabilities? Well, so the the thing is, most of these the inferential statistics is based on probabilities. Okay, so if you take any statistics class, in most of the cases, before even taking a statistics class, or even within the statistics class, you will be required to learn something about probabilities. For example, like if you look over here, this is a probability. Like this value over here, 0 0.21, is the probability. And that is the probability that if you select another sample, then the difference would be bigger, equal, or bigger than 13. That probability is 21, and that's quite a large probability. And the larger that probability, then you simply say, okay, this is, this is probably not the case. Okay, you do not reject the null hypothesis that you make. Now, um, now let me ask you a different question and illustrate how statistics can help you to make a decision. Or specifically, how the probabilities can help you to make a decision. Well, all of you are comfortable, I hope like all of you are comfortable with basic probabilities. Like, if, if I randomly select a student in this class, what is the probability that that student will be a female student? If I randomly select a, a person. What? No. How did you know that? Females divided uh, about 40% females and uh, 6%. Okay, so what you did basically, what you can do, in total we have 38 students, okay? 14 females and 24 students, okay? So what we can do, if you want to calculate the probability of female, then all you need to do is 14 divided by 38 is the total number of students and that will be above 40 percent okay 36 percent so that's that's basically the probability now the thing is the question that I wanted to ask you how many of you have ever played a lottery or a gamble well green card doesn't doesn't <laughs> count right? okay a lottery for money okay or gamble Okay, well, not a lot, but still, the thing is, using the probability, I can tell you, like, we, we can find an answer. Should we gamble or not? It's, in a sense, a utility decision, but we will strip down that even to a, a, a in a more simple terms. Like, it, it will be a probability decision, basically. Okay? Well, let me give you... Let me give you a specific example. Let's say there are 38 lotteries. Okay? And the price of that ticket is is 2 monats. It's the price, okay? And the thing is, if we want to play that lottery now, I tell you, okay, the every ticket is two monats. The price for that is 50 monats. So if you win, there will be only one winner, okay? There will be only one winner. And the price would be Now, 
Would you play that game or not? Those who would play that game, please no. raise your hands. Only one student, okay? Well, now if I make it raise the stakes even, even bigger, 60 AZN. <laughs> would you play that? You'll, you pay only 2 AZN, but you'll get like 60 AZN. Too small, okay, then let's make it 70. Let's make it 70. Well, now we have like at least two players. Well, the thing is, the, the probability that you will win. What is the probability that you will win? The probability that you will win is going to be 1 divided 38. 1 out of 38. No? And actually to make this, to make the calculations easy, I'll make this like 50 students. So that would be 1 over 50. Or 2%, yes. Okay? So this is the probability that you will win. But at the same time, there's a, the probability that you will lose is 1 minus p, which is going to be 0 0.98. This means, like, what, what that probability means, it means that if we play that game repeatedly, over and over again, like if we play this 100 times, then each one of you, in two of these out of 100, two times, you will win at least twice. Well, not at least, but you will win exactly, on average, twice. So if we play 100 times the game, if we play lottery, then let's say that particular lady will win twice out of 100. And in 98, per, in 98 times she will lose, if we play that 100 times. Okay? So in a sense, probability gives you, the, in the long run, how, if you play repeatedly that game, it tells you how many times you will win. It can tell you how many times you will win. So if you play thousand times, hundred times, you will win only twice, on average. Okay. So now what you can do, you can calculate what would be your average gain if you play. What would be your average gain? You know your loss. Okay. If you lose, you will lose how many? How much money? Two, Two AZN. But let's calculate your average gain. Your average gain is going to be much lower than 70 AZN. Why? Because if you play 100 times, okay, let's say you played, we play the lottery 100 times, and you are particularly playing that, okay? Out of 100, you will win only twice, okay? So you will win twice, and your gain would be two times 70. Now, in 98 times, you will lose. And that would be 98 times minus 2. Minus 2 for the fact that you lose money. No. You, oh, okay. Here, here you still minus Okay? So now, but actually, let's make this 72 to make the calculation easier. Okay? So now you can calculate the average, and you played 100 times. Okay? If you played 100 times, then to calculate your win, this is your win and this is your loss. So what you need to do is 2 times 72 minus 2 plus 98 times minus 2. That's your total gain or loss, whatever it is. Okay? And if you divide that by the average, by the total number of games, that will be what? 2 plus 98, that will be 100. No? 
So now this will be your average gain. And your average gain, if you calculate that, you will see that it's going to be negative. Okay? Let's actually calculate that. Over here you will have 140 minus uh, 196 over 100 and that would be <coughs> 56, negative 56 out of 100 or negative 0 0.56. That means that per every game you will lose 56 capex. Okay, so on every round, you, on average, you will lose 56 capex, and that's called expected value. Expected value. So this is expected value because no one is going to play with you for 100 times. Okay, the game 100 times or more, they will play only once. But given the probability, since you know the probabilities, which is 0 0.02 and 0 0.98 you can easily calculate the expected gain. And to calculate that, actually we can rewrite this a little bit differently. And that would be, like we can rewrite this as 2 out of 100 times 72 minus 2 plus 9800 minus 2. We can rewrite this like that and then note, this is basically the probability of us winning. Okay? And this one is the probability of us losing. So that would be 0 0.02 times the outcome plus the probability of losing times the outcome of losing, which is negative 2. So if you, if you put that in general, that will be, that there's a general formula for that, which tells you that your expected value your expected value would be, let's say, probability of outcome 1 times by the outcome. This is the probability, this is the outcome. Plus probability of outcome 2 times outcome of the second outcome. Plus probability of outcome 3 times third outcome and so on. And that would be, so the, you multiply probability of specific outcome of this outcome by its outcome and then you add them up and then you will get the expected frequency and that will tell you if you should on average if you will win money or you will lose money okay but the thing is since you mentioned utility um, the thing is this is not always helpful and there is there is sort of a um, well-known paradox and actually, that would be the last thing that I'll tell you today, and I'll give you some time to think about it without giving you an answer. But that is called a St. Petersburg Paradox. Okay? What St. Petersburg Paradox is... There's no definite What? There's no definite expected utility. Well, the expected value over here is negative, so you should not play. But what if... I change a little bit the numbers. Let's say, if you win, you will take 78 manats or 100 manats. Would you still play? 100 manats, yes. Yeah. If it's 100 manats, then you should play because on average you will win. Okay, you expect it to win. If, if these things are the same, if it's actually 2 manats, but like you're your gain would be, let's say, 200 manats. Then you should play. You're giving two manats, and the chances, then you will get, let, let me actually change actually, the numbers over here. You will, you will win nothing. No, you yeah, still, you if, if the price, if the price is still two,
But the when is, let's say, 250. Or let's make it 252. Will you still play that game? You will only pay two dollars, but you will win 252. Well, to calculate that, if we are so-called risk neutral, if we do not care about the risk that much, or like we're indifferent toward the risk, then we should play. Why? Because our gain then would be 252 minus 2, which is 250. Then the average would be 2 times 250 plus 98 times negative 2 over 100. And that would be 500 minus 196 over 100, which is going to be uh, 304 out of 100. And that would be 304. So your expected gain is going to be 3 monats, three monats and 4 gepix. So should you play? Why not? Yes. If, if you're maximizing your utility, then you should play. If you're maximizing your profit, and if you're rational, and if you're risk neutral, then you should play. Because on average, you will gain how much? Three monats. You will gain three monats per game if you play that 100 times, repeatedly. Well, but still, that will be your expected gain. Okay, so based on the expected gain, expected value, you, you, should, you should make a decision. Okay, should I play or not? Okay, but there is one thing, one paradox, there's, uh, which, which was known as a, uh, and that's actually, the, there's a paradox in this class as well. Even though your gain is positive, okay, it's three or four, uh, three monads and four gap X. There are still students in this class who do not want to play the game. Okay? And that's actually first, well, one of the first documented thing of that case was known as St. Petersburg Paradox. What St. Petersburg Paradox is, it tells you that I'll flip a coin, okay, and it will land either on head or tail. Okay? And if you get tail, you win. <coughs> if you get tail, or like I will throw that repeatedly, okay, infinite times, until I get head. Okay, if you if it falls on tail, you win. I pay you, but. It, and I will throw that repeatedly. Let's say I threw it the, the coin and it landed on tail, you get payment. I flip it again, it gets tail, I still pay you. I flip one once again and you still get paid, okay? You still win. All the way until it's head. If, it, if I flip like on the first time and the first time it's head, you lose, okay? And the payment for you I will, I will flip, the ta flip the coin, okay, I'll flip the coin, let me see if I have a coin over here, yeah. So head or tail, okay, let's say not, in, not instead of head and tail like the, yeah, that will be map or not map, okay. So what I, what I suggest if it falls on the math, okay, I'll stop the game. I'll, I'll flip that repeatedly, like, okay, it's map, the game is stopped. But if it's the other side, then it will not be. So the chance that, and we'll play that repeatedly until it lands on the map. It landed on the map, I stop the game. Now the probability that it will be map is what? is what? It's one out of two. It's 50%. No? And your gain would be this. Your gain is going to be 2n. n is the number of 
flips. N will be the number of flips. Okay? If I flip that twice and twice it lands on the other side, and then on the third time it lands on the map, then that would be your gain would be 2 over 2, which is going to be 4. Okay? If I get like map. If I get like on the three and on the third I get let's say not map. Then one, two, three. Okay, we play three times, so that would be two over two your gain would be two over three. And that will be eight. Okay? So now what we can do and the paradox is, would you play that game? And how much, well, no, not even, you, all of you say, no, we won't play. But I would play that game. Why? Because I don't have to pay anything, do I? I'm sorry, it doesn't matter how you flip it. Well, uh, assuming that you, you flip it fairly, like, like there's an like equal chance that there will be map or not map. It doesn't matter. Okay. Well, how much would that be? Val like, how much you should you you should be willing to pay for that for that game? Well, first of all, would you play that game? How many of you would play that game? Paying no money. Paying no money. Well, all of you basically. But now, how much would you be willing to pay for that game? What? Forty dollars. Well, the thing is, how many of you would you're you're willing to pay forty dollars? No. But the thing is, and that's the paradox. If we calculate the average gain for that game, then the thing is, the average gain would be infinity. But you're willing to pay only forty monats, which is way below that. And let me actually tell you, the, the, let's actually calculate the probability, probability of your gain, expected probability for your gain. And that expected probability would be, would be this. What is the probability that it will land on, that on the first it will land on map? What's that probability? It's one out of two, no? What is the probability on two of them you will have map? One, one out of four. So it's one over two, this one, times one over two. What is the probability that on the third one it will be still map? One out of eight. One out of eight. It's this probability times the probability of that. So one out of two times one out of two times one out of two. What is the probability that on the fourth one it will still be map? It's one out of two times one out of two times one out of two times one out of two. Okay? These are the probabilities. And for each one, what I can do, and, and let's assume that we flip that and it goes all the way in infinite times. We always end up with the map. Okay? Which becomes less and less realistic because the probability decreases. With every flip, the probability goes lower and goes down. And eventually it becomes like, even here it's almost zero now. Okay? It's 0, 0.00 something. Now, now, now that we have the probabilities, and the probability, we can estimate, and we know the value. And that value would be, 2 over, like here is 1, plus 2 over the probability 2, plus, but the thing is, these are the outcomes. Like in the first one, if you have the map and then the tail, your gain would be 2 over 1, no? And then you multiply by its probability, just like in the expected, and then we, for the, if it's only two maps, like then the probability would be 2 over 2 times 
1 over 2 squared here. And then we'll have for the third one 2 over 3 times 1 over 2 cubed. And then plus 2 over 4 times 1 over 2 fourth and so on. Okay? Note, for, note that for all of them the value is 1. And if you do that infinite time like infinitely then the expected value you, you will get will be infinite. Like it will be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. But why not many of you, almost no one, but there's only one per person who is willing to pay only 40 manats? You can make a fortune if you play that, but you don't want to play that. You're only willing to pay 40 manats for that. Well, the thing is, I will leave that question to you. So it's up to you to think about that. And um, think about that and why do you think that this is the case? Why do you think that people are still not willing to pay for that? And um, this, is, this is one way of, of finding out, uh, of thinking about it. It's, it's beyond statistics, but um, this is an example of the, exa uh, of the cases that statistics basically deals with. Okay? It's just part of it, but these are the things that we do. So um, I would like to stop here. And um, if you have any questions or comments, please. Probability of what? Um, Selecting female? No, 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 no. Um, uh, the percentage for female was around 56%, right? Uh, for male? No, seconds. Seconds, seconds for. Yeah, uh, for male, it was around 43%, right? Okay. Um, and the probability, I mean, um, 13% was what? If not, no, 36% was the probability of females. If I randomly select a student in this class, then what is the probability that that person is student is 36%. But 13 there was the difference between the male and female talk. Well, the thing is, there is there is so-called statistically significance case. What statistically significance means, it means that, like, the, there was difference, okay? Females, in our sample, they talked more, all right? But let's say, the, in this class, the average number of uh, talking over the phone was... Oh, hold on a second, I think this is all. Was... 48 seconds, okay? The average is 48 seconds, okay? But look at our sample. In our sample, it's 45 seconds. We are making error, no? It's 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 quite a big difference. You cannot say that it's it's bigger than that, because we why we have that case, why we have actually 54 seconds in our sample, where we would expect that it's it should be, be about 48 seconds. And if you take another sample, another 10, like infinite, not all possible sample means, then the average would be equal to 48, exactly 48. 
but in some cases you will make some errors okay just like we did here and that error is six seconds could you, just, could you please change the uh, page sheet to that? I'll get I'll get to that my point is that when we take a sample we make an error okay and we acknowledge that error by the p-value probability so-called p-value probability but that's the the error it does not allow us to say that we like the students actually talk more than 48 seconds it could be because of the chance no and that is because of the chance because if you select another sample now you will get actually lower value than 48 you can get a value which is lower than 48 and most most likely you'll get that so we're making a chance that's because of the chance that difference is because of the chance and that's called sampling error okay because which is purely because of the chance all right but there is a possibility that it's not because of the chance okay when it's not because of the chance you call it statistically significant difference when there is a difference when there is no be, the difference is because of the chance you say that it's not statistically significant okay and that's the case in our comparison males and females it's 13 seconds but 13 seconds is not a big difference statistically it's not a big difference it could be because of the chance okay that 13 second difference could be because of the chance and that's why it's called not statistically significant it is in that number of seconds right it's not the it's, it's, it's not the number of seconds it's the number of seconds it's not the probability it's just 13 seconds what's the probability the probability that you will select another sample and the difference would be 13 seconds or bigger is 21 percent over here and that's a quite a big percentage okay it's quite a big percentage in 21 percent of the cases you will get 13 seconds difference and even more okay so among that these, could be because of the chance among these students or? among well in general in general and that that tells you that it's because of the chance it's the chances of getting that that large value is quite big whenever the chances of getting that large number is small that means that it's because not because of the chance but something else okay whenever the chance is really really small let's say if if there is indeed a small a difference okay if there is indeed a difference between females and males then you would expect that regardless of the chances okay the chance will be very very small that you will get a big difference okay just like if these things are equal but you will get a big difference then the chances are very small okay then you will say that okay well there is a difference there is a statistical significance but imagine that if if they are equal but you're getting a difference a really really big difference and you estimate that the probability of getting that really really dif big difference is very small then you say okay maybe I'm wrong I'm wrong it's not really equal but it's the other way around here you do not have enough enough uh, evidence to say that because the probability is big it's 21% there's a there's still a chance that you will select a, a person uh, a, a sample and there would be in another sample the difference would be 13 and more and that's a that's a big percentage yes no be, it, it tells you that there that could be because of the chance Well, we say that here we assume that when we conduct the test, we assume that pro probability for females equals to the probability of males. When we conduct this test, we assume that. Okay? And if they are equal, 
if they are equal, then the difference is 13 seconds, okay? If they're equal, then you still have a chance to get that difference. And that chance is quite big, it's 21%. But if they're not equal? If they're not equal, you do not know if they're equal or not. You will, well, that's, that's actually a good thing about statistics. You're never certain of things. If the probability was uh, 13, for example, not 21, but 13. If the probability was, let's say, 0 0.00001, okay, that's a very small probability. That means that there is no way that you will get 13. If they're equal, there's no way that you will get that big difference. Okay, that means almost zero. So that means that it's not about the chance, it's something else. It's probably they are different, but we assume that they're equal. Actually, even if the, prob uh, the, uh, the probability will be 10%, mm -hmm. uh, actually, even in this case, the number of calls from the side of females... In 10% of the... If it's 10%, then you might think, okay, well, 10% is, is quite a low probability. Okay. It could be but uh, in any case, the number of calls of females. Would but be in that case, what that twenty-one percent tells you, it tells you that if they are equal, if these two things are equal, then there is like in twenty-one percent of the cases, the difference between will, between the like in the sample would be thirteen seconds and more. That's what it tells you. If they are equal. It's a little bit counterintuitive, but um, if the means, like when, we, when you conduct this test, you assume that they're equal. You assume this. You assume that. You assume that they're equal, and the differences, if they're equal, they would be, the, 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 the principle of that test is that you assume that they're equal, okay? But even if they're equal, in some cases you will have samples which are bigger like in one cases you can get bigger th th there might be some differences okay these differences might be because of the chance or might be because of something else okay if it's something else then the difference would be big and the probability of getting that difference is going to be really really small well we said that it's bigger than males no there's actually in hypothesis testing, and if you've conduct, if you taken statistics class, in hypothesis testing, this would be alternative test hypothesis. This would be a null hypothesis. Well, the other way around. This would be the null hypothesis. Alternative hypothesis and null hypothesis, they are mutually exclusive, meaning that if one happens, the other one cannot happen. So when you do the test, you usually take the, as a null hypothesis, you usually take the one which has equality sign. Because that allows you to make, conduct the test, to calculate the numbers over there. Okay, if you have this, you will not be able to do that. But if you have this equality sign over here, then you will be able to do that. And if you reject null hypothesis, if you reject this, okay, if you reject this, then you say, well, this is true. But if you cannot reject this, then you say, well, we don't know. We do not have enough evidence to say that this is true. So what, which conclusion can we come to based on this information? Based on that information, we, we, we cannot say that females talk more or females talk less. We cannot say anything. We simply can say that based on our data, we do not have enough evidence to say that females talk more. But there is 21% chance that the difference will be more than 13, right? If, there, it's a conditional probability. If they are equal, then the probability of getting 13 and more would be 21%. If these two things are equal. Okay? And that's a big probability. It's like 21 is quite a large probability. Maybe I'm the same for the same for this two the 
You the set, the set. Okay. Why, why is it? Well, that is because usually when you take a sample, your sample will be, if you take, like there are m several methods of taking a sample. And if you, your sample is, on average, would be representative. Meaning that the qualities that your sample has would be equal to, the, would be the same as the qualities that your population has. So therefore, you would expect that the parameters are, would be the same. Just like in your blood, blood sample. Okay? When they take a small sample, your blood sample, and the parameters of your blood sample would be equal to the parameters of your blood in the whole system. So that's why, on average, you would expect that the... On, ideally, if this sample is representative, ideally, every single value would be equal to this. Every single parameter, if you, if you have a sample, that's a sample would be ideal sample if every single parameter that you estimate for the sample would be equal to the population sample. This is not always the case, but in, on average you will be there. Okay? Well, that's, that's basically it. Not a problem.